Okay, welcome back to part two of our first lesson on identities. Um, so let's finish example six. Factor the following trig expressions. Okay, so factoring, it, as you saw it come up in trig equations already, is very important. Um, it's going to be even more important on trig identities because sometimes to manipulate an identity you need to be able to factor it. So take a look at this expression. And again, when you look at a trig expression, just try and envision it as a variable, okay? And that might help you factoring. I wouldn't suggest, like with equations, that we replace cos with uh, x and sine with y. You need to kind of look at this uh, in a different way because, um, yeah, so let's give this one a try. So factoring, let's think about how we factor. And if you need to review that uh, video on factoring from the first less, first unit, make sure you do that. So first step in factoring is great as common factor. So what do you notice from these two things? We can take out a 3. I'm going to switch to blue. I'm getting tired of red. Okay, so take out a 3. We have then cos to the fourth theta minus, and we divide 3 out of the second term, sine to the fourth theta. Okay, now something's to the fourth here. Okay, if you recall this kind of factoring, say if we had like x squared minus y squared, we could do a difference of squares, right, when we're factoring that, x minus y and x plus y. Okay, well, we really have the same thing happening here, okay, except our thing being squared is actually cos squared. So do your two sets of brackets. Got to warn you, they have to be a fair ways apart. Okay, um, so we really square root the first term to get what our difference of squares are going to be. So if you square root cos to the fourth, you get cos squared. Okay, so let's write cos squared and cos squared in each of the first positions. And just check that. If we multiplied cos squared times cos squared, yes, you would get cos to the fourth. Okay, same idea with sine to the fourth. We would have sine squared and sine squared. Okay, and just check if we multiply those, yes, we'd get sine to the fourth. All right, to get a difference of squares, our signs have to be opposite so that our, when we foil it back out again, our outside and our inside terms would cancel with the opposite signs. And there we go. That's really what you would expect to have done for factoring. And yes, I know this is a difference of squares as well. To factor that really doesn't do us any good because if you recall on our formula sheet, we have all these Pythagorean identities. And guess what? This one in particular is equal to one. So if we were to go further with our simplifying, we would probably do that, okay? Now, how far to go here? I would stop here, okay? Um, we don't know what we're trying to make this equal yet. That's, you know, the key with identities is knowing what you have to get to. But, um, so we would likely do this, but we don't know. So we'll stop there. All right, let's look at the next one. All right, we have two terms. Usually I underline terms just to make them pop a little more. Terms are separated with plus or minus signs. Okay, so we have two terms. Again, let's look for the greatest common factor of, it looks like sine squared would factor out of both. So when we divide sine squared out of the first term, sine squared divided by sine squared would be 1. When we divide sine squared out of the second term, these sine squareds would cancel, and you'd be left with cotan squared. And if you ever are not sure about if you factored it correctly, just think in your head how it would look if you multiplied it back out again. Sine squared times 1, sine squared times cotan squared, and we get our original. All right, now take a look at this. Really, as far as factoring goes, we'd be done at this point. But if we were to go further and simplify, 1 plus cotan squared, that sounds like it should be on our formula sheet. Okay, let's check our formula sheet. And sure enough, 1 plus cotan squared is equal to cosecant squared. All right, so we could, they didn't ask us to do this, but we'll go a little bit further. 1 plus cotan squared could be replaced with cosecant squared. Okay, and then, hey, what do we know about cosecant? Cosecant is 1 over sine. Okay, would that help us if we, well, let's square both sides here. Okay, so that cosecant squared, which is what we want, would be 1 over sine squared. Okay, would we want to do that, do you think? Ha ha, we're multiplying by sine squared. I think replacing cosecant squared with 1 over sine squared would be a very good idea. Okay, so 1 over sine squared, 
and what would happen there. Sine squared is like over 1, and we have a common uh, factor of sine squared, so that can divide. Hey, what does that divide down to then? We have 1 over 1, basically, right? Which equals 1. Wow, can you believe that? Simplified all the way down to here? That was um, hard to believe. Okay, so take a look at your unit outline to see what questions are assigned. We're not doing all the questions on this lesson. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll uh, work on that in class tomorrow. So good luck, everybody. Thanks for listening.